Hello folks, uh, my name is Rodrigo Worley. I'm an extension weed scientist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Elisa Asman uh, for the invite and the opportunity to be here today. I also want to thank uh, my colleague here at UW-Madison, Roger Schmidt, with the Nutrient and Pest Management Program for helping me with the recording uh, here today. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about uh, C and spray, precision herbicide application technologies. These are technologies that are coming online, and my objective here today is to generate awareness uh, about this upcoming technologies. So here's the outline uh, of my uh, presentation, why I intend, what I intend to cover. First is how do they work, okay? Then I want to present the results of a survey that we conducted back in 2021 and 2022, asking our stakeholders their perceptions and also their understanding about this uh, uh, smart spray technologies. And then last, I want to discuss the impact of nozzle type, boom height, and travel speed considerations when making applications uh, with uh, C and spray or smart spray uh, systems. Okay, as you've heard already, uh, the title of my presentation is C and spray, but you already heard me say smart spray. Okay, there's different uh, terminologies uh, out there that are being used interchangeably. So when I say C and spray, smart spray or uh, optical spot applications, I'm talking about the same things, okay? And this is kind of what I'm describing, right? So application technologies are evolving and are evolving incredibly fast. And through machine learning and artificial intelligence, these novel systems, what they do now, they can travel through our corn and soybean fields, they can detect weeds and only spray where the systems are detecting the weeds. Rodrigo, how are the systems doing it? In a nutshell, what happens here, as you can see in some of these images, and here you will see images from uh, the green eye technology. Okay, so we have three images here from the green eye technology, and we also have one image here uh, on the bottom right corner uh, from uh, John Deere C and Spray Ultimate. Okay, but in a nutshell, they all work in a similar fashion. So we have the sprayers traveling through the field, and what you see in the sprayers are these cameras, okay? And what these cameras are doing, they're collecting images from your fields live. And then through uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence, the sprayers can detect where your crop rows are, and then in anything that's green in between your crop rows will trigger an application. So this is what you see in this image here. You have your corn crop, uh, the system, the camera has detected a weed, and you see that those nozzles are only being triggered where those weeds are rather than treating the entire field. And this is uh, some amazing uh, technologies here that are advancing and advancing really, really rapidly, okay? Uh, so if you want to learn more about the systems and hear more from the manufacturers themselves, uh, earlier this year, or I'm sorry, in, the, in September of 2023, uh, we had a live webinar, okay? And in this webinar, we invited representatives from uh, John Deere Blue River, from Green Eye, and also from One Smart Spray, which is a joint venture between Bosch and BSF. Okay, they're also developing uh, smart spray technologies. We invited them uh, to present. Okay, so if you're interested in learning more about these technologies, uh, I urge you to uh, scan this QR code that you see here in the bottom right. Uh, side of the screen. Okay, I'm pointing here. Uh, this uh, QR code is going to take you to a two-hour webinar that we recorded and we have available uh, in in our YouTube channel. So a lot of great information uh, captured here in this two-hour webinar. If you're interested in learning more about the behind the scenes on these technologies and how the manufacturers uh, are positioning them. Okay, so I just want to put a plug for that. So, as I said in my outline, today I want to discuss some of the main learnings from a survey that we conducted back in 2021 uh, and early 2022. And for the survey, uh, we asked soybean and corn farmers, you know, how they perceived uh, the deployment and adoption of this targeted uh, spraying uh, technologies. So the main learnings here, uh, about 65% of our respondents and majority of our respondents came from uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, Minnesota, and then from uh, Kansas and Nebraska. Okay, so that's the territory that we have covered in the survey. 
uh, well, 65 percent of our respondents and we had a total of 128 uh, folks participating in our survey and we appreciate all of those folks that took the time to answer the survey they indicated that they are familiar with targeted spray technologies okay so about two-thirds of our clientele that we interviewed they are familiar with this technologies which which is interesting however there's still a, a third out there that had not heard about them okay now this is where it gets interesting uh, even though two-thirds of our uh, clientele is aware uh, of this technologies less than 20 percent of respondents as of the time we conducted the survey uh, you know foresaw adoption of targeted spray technologies on the acres they manage so minority of them indicated that they would potentially be adopting this technologies right away and about 50 percent of them indicated they need more information to decide okay and that's why events like the one here today are very very important we want to generate awareness we want to provide information to our stakeholders so they can have a better understanding whether these technologies would fit uh, their production systems okay we then asked them how they thought this technologies would be implemented for weed control in their operations and about 50 percent of them indicated that they thought this technologies would be used for late season weed control and i have late season weed control in red here because this is a very important aspect and i'm going to get back to this in a little bit were you asking me the same question two three years ago this is how i would have responded Okay, but after working with this technologies for two years here, I have a better understanding that these technologies are not coming for late season weed control. Okay, these are not technologies that we're going to be deploying and spraying our fields in August and only targeting the escapes of pigweeds and ragweed out there. This is not how we're going to use them. Okay, uh, and then one of the main concerns that we heard in this uh, from the survey is that how do we spray a residual herbicide? Uh, on the whole field while targeting only a few weeds, right? So how do we place our layered residuals if we're making targeted uh, applications? So that was an important concern that we're also going to be addressing in this uh, webinar today. Okay, so starting with this uh, concern of how do we spray residuals, uh, you know, the, the manufacturers of these technologies, they have given this a lot of thought, okay? And one of the strategies to overcome this concern is what we call this two boom, two tank system. Okay, so for instance, here you have uh, images from the One Smart Spray system. Here you have images uh, from the uh, John Deere C and Spray Ultimate. Okay, what these technologies have, they have what we call again two tank, two boom. So they have one tank, one boom for the smart applications. And then the second tank and boom system allows the producer, the applicator, to make a broadcast application. So you can see here in this image, uh, for in instance, we have one of the booms uh, making a broadcast application, and then you have the smart boom here only delivering your foliar products uh, where the weeds are. Okay, so this is uh, fascinating. Uh, so again, the two tank, two boom systems, why are they important? Because they allow us to separate our foliar products from our residual herbicides. We want to spray our residual herbicides across the entire landscape, but our foliar products, we want to uh, spot spray them only where the weeds are. Okay, so these new technologies allow us to do that. Uh, the other reason for using this, uh, we all have heard a lot about antagonistic herbicides, for instance, uh, the synthetic auxins uh, with our grass killer herbicides. So oftentimes when we mix them together, uh, we have issues with antagonism. Through these systems, we could spray them uh, separately, okay? And then if you're talking about, let's say, volunteer control corn in your soybeans and you also want to make a fungicide application or a micronutrient, for instance, you could use uh, the broadcast boom for your fungicide or for your uh, micronutrients, whereas you can use a smart boom for your grass killer to control the volunteer corn. So I think the opportunities are endless, and this is really going to uh, move us, uh, you know, our entire industry here towards a new uh, direction. So a lot of excitement and opportunities uh, around these technologies. The One of the big questions and concern is, okay, so how much do I mix? Uh, I don't think we have clear answers on that, especially for that uh, spot application, right? And I think with experience here, as we learn, uh, use patterns across our fields, we can estimate a little better. But as of now, how much should we mix for the smart applications? I think there's some uncertainties out there uh, as far as that go. Okay, so now back to one of the comments that I have, one of the concerns is this late season uh, weed control. A lot of folks uh, thought that this is how these technologies can be used. I think first and foremost, we just need to acknowledge that our weeds are getting very difficult to control. 
And if you're th thinking about late season weed control, we're gonna be spraying weeds that are uh, well advanced. And here's what happens when we spray weeds that are well advanced, right? You have one scenario here, uh, glufosinate, uh, that was sprayed to a tall pigweed, a water hemp plant. And here you also have 2,4-D in list one that was sprayed to a more advanced water hemp plant. We do get a little bit of symptomology. We kind of slow them down a little bit, but we don't get full control, okay? So this is one of the first challenges as far as trying to spray late season uh, goes. The other aspect about this technology that I think is very important, as I was describing early on, as our systems are traveling, as our cameras are traveling with our sprayers, they can detect where the crop rows are, okay? And as the season goes by, our crops are developing. So I have a set of pictures here, 15 inch uh, row spacing on the left, okay? And then here on the right, I have 30 inch row spacing, top is no-till, down below is tillage. So I have a lot of images. The four images on the left uh, were taken July 1st, and then the, the, the other four images uh, on the right, uh, they were taken July 15th, okay, so about two weeks apart, and here you can see, you give the, the crop two weeks, it's going to evolve that, uh, it's going to develop that canopy, it's going to be ca closing the canopy row. Rodrigo, why are you saying all this? Well, the systems, the smart spray technologies are going to work very well on 30-inch systems when the crop is not very advanced. Why is that? Because then you can clearly detect where the crop rows are, can clearly detect anything in between row and trigger those applications. Now, if you're in a scenario like this where you're making a late application and your soybean canopy is already closed, the systems can no longer detect the weeds, okay? And what happens in that scenario, the system goes back to the default mode, which is a broadcast application, okay? So that's why late season application technologies are not gonna work uh, for this, uh, you know, for this novel technology that are coming available to us. The other thing that I want to talk about is uh, actually being able to detect weeds in row uh, versus in between row. This is a concern that I've heard uh, from our stakeholders. So these are pictures that I took here in southern Wisconsin. Uh, one of our growers, he has currently access uh, to a Ara high precision sprayer, uh, which is developed by Eco Robotics. That's an European company. So he's testing it on his farm and we visited the farms a couple times, okay? And these are pictures that I took, okay, 14 days after he ran the equipment. So one thing that you're gonna see here in these two pictures is that anything that's in between rows, for instance, what you see in green here, uh, the system was able to detect, spray, and control. Okay, so that's excellent news. However, you what you can see here is that there are some escapes. You see here in red, a red root pigweed, and if you move to the image uh, to the left here, what you're gonna see here is this velvet leaf, this right adjacent to the row. You see this red root pigweed right here. So when you have those weeds that are somewhat similar to the crop right adjacent to the row, it becomes very difficult for the systems uh, to trigger uh, you know, an application and, and spray where they are because it's difficult for them to detect. So those are the things that we need to keep in mind as our crops progress, as you have more weeds in row and weeds that are somewhat similar uh, to the crop like velvet leaf and soybean, red root and soybean, uh, we might have some misses out there and that's something to uh, keep in mind, okay? So again, just to recap this whole use of this technology for late season application, uh, we have resistance out there, controlling advanced weeds is very, very difficult as we have learned over the years. And the analogy that I like to make, you know, we were making tremendous investments to purchase this sea and spray, smart spray technologies. You know, there are a substantial amount of extra cost there for your operation, but if you're not using them right, what I like to say is like buying a Ferrari to run shores uh, around the farm, right? We don't want to do that. We want to buy the Ferrari and we, we want to use the Ferrari uh, the right way. And that's why events like this uh, are so important, okay? The other aspect is our industry is under, you know, scrutiny right now. We see what's happening with dicamba, what's happening uh, with atrazine, uh, and so on. So these technologies can actually help us, right? Because we can be more targeted with our applications. We can deliver the herbicides only where they're needed. That's fascinating. As a grower, one thing that comes to mind as well when you start talking about this is savings. Right, And a common question that I get is, Rodrigo, how much savings can we get out of these technologies? And just like anything in agronomy, just like any extension specialist would respond back to you is, it depends, right? So we see these claims uh, on the web. I mean, I have a couple of screenshots here uh, from some of the manufacturers, right? You can see up to 90% herbicide savings, okay? I want to say up to, it's not 90% savings, it's up to. 
you see here an average of 77% savings, okay? There is a caveat uh, behind that, okay? Because the savings, you're only going to get the savings if you're spraying earlier in the season when your system has high level of accuracy and detection and if you have low weed pressure, okay? Because if you're spraying later where the system can no longer differentiate your crop from weed, it goes back to the fault mode, which is broadcast application. Okay, and if you have a lot of weeds, the systems are going to be spraying a lot. So the savings here depends on what the initial conditions are uh, in that field. And here I have some contrasting examples, okay. Uh, this image here, uh, no pre-emergence herbicide. I'm going to control everything early post. By the way, don't do that. Uh, Dr. Axman probably tells you not to do that as well, right. Uh, so here's kind of the worst case scenario. I skip a pre, I'm going to do everything post. Okay, that just, you know, from a technology perspective, you're from an integrated management perspective, that just does not make sense, okay? You're going to have to spray this entire area and good luck killing this water hemp. Now you move to a scenario in the right here and you think, man, I have a good pre-emergence. It did really good, right? Uh, but then if you simulate kind of what a spot application would look like, you're probably treating at least 50, 60% of the area, okay? Now you move to the next scenario here where I had a very strong pre-emergence herbicide program. This is where you're really going to capture that saving piece uh, that we're talking about. Okay, so the saving weed density, uh, they're highly, highly correlated. Okay, the, the one thing, uh, shifting gears here a little bit, but also talking about savings and so on, uh, these technologies will offer something that we in weed science and weed management we haven't had access to before, which is weed maps. Okay, and this is fascinating. So as this uh, equipment, this equipment is traveling across your field, is collecting a lot of images, and it's triggering the application. So at the end of an application, and here's an example from the One Smart Spray through the Resarview Digital platform. We work closely. Uh, with the one smart spray team, okay, so I want to thank them for allowing us to use these images But we have two commercial fields in the state of Illinois Okay, the pictures on the top are indicating the as applied maps or the areas that were treated uh, Post emergence with the herbicide. Okay, so we have one field on the left here and this field is a hundred fifty three acre field Okay, and the area sprayed here was 74 acres out of the 153. So that equates to a savings of almost 52%. Okay, 52% savings in this particular field. Now you move to this other field here. Uh, this is a 124 acre field. Okay, uh, the area treated in this field was actually 18 acres. So that equates to an 85% saving. Okay, so much less weed pressure, higher savings. So as the application is done, you as the applicator will have access to this information. You can see the savings right away. And then the systems will also generate the weed infestation maps. And this is fantastic because now you have access to the areas within your fields that have higher infestation of weeds. So you can plan more strate strategically for the following growing seasons. Where are the areas I'm going to put higher rates of pre-herbicides? Where are the areas maybe I want to consider a cover crop? for integrated weed management and access to this type of data and images becomes very, very powerful. Okay, here's a, an important aspect though that we need to think about and talk about as far as these technologies go, okay, and it's a very fine line between savings versus weed control because if we really want to optimize saving, the best way to do so is to have very narrow uh, spacing for your nozzles and only trigger one nozzle upon weed detection. So this is the image that I borrowed from Dr. Tom Wolf. And by the way, Dr. Wolf has a tremendous article uh, on this uh, matter here. So if you're interested, please Google spray patterns uh, for spot sprayers. Uh, these articles and all these images will be their outstanding information, okay? But if you truly want to save uh, with the smart sprayers, you want to activate one nozzle upon weed detection, and you want to use what we call an even nozzle, right? And these even nozzles, they distribute, these are nozzles that we use to use for banded, banded applications, so they distribute the same amount of volume, okay, in this uh, band that's being treated. That's the best way to optimize savings. However, we have some concerns on that front. Because when we're traveling, not everything is uniform, okay? So if that boom goes down and you're using an even nozzle, what happens is that you end up overdosing that weed. And if that boom goes too low, you might miss a weed, okay? Now, on the other hand, if your boom goes higher, what happens there is that you end up underdosing, okay? So using one even nozzle once the weed is detected makes a lot of sense from a saving standpoint, but it comes with risk especially if that boom is moving during application. 
So an alternative to single even nozzles, we now know of companies that are going to be using, uh, you know, they're going to be activating multiple nozzles, uh, you know, the, the, they're going to be activating multiple tapered flat nozzles that we usually use in broadcast applications to minimize the risk of weed misses in there, okay? The downsides of that is that you reduce your savings because you're triggering multiple nozzles. So this is a dilemma now within the industry, but it's something we gotta pay close attention to, okay? The other thing to keep in mind is travel speed. That's a question that comes uh, all the time. Remember, the faster that machine is traveling, okay, you give less time for the computers to actually detect the image and trigger uh, the weeds and trigger an application, okay? But the other thing too is that the faster you're traveling, the longer it's gonna take for the droplet to land, okay? So you need to keep that into account. So if you're traveling too fast, for instance, here we have, uh, Dr. Wolf has uh, two different uh, examples here. If your boom is 32 inches high and you're traveling at 12 miles per hour, if the boom is higher, it's gonna take longer for the particle to land compared to a lower boom. And the same is true with the speed the faster the speed, the longer it's gonna take for that uh, droplet to land, okay? Why is that important? Because the faster we're traveling, the higher the boom, the area, this band length here increases in order to target the weed. And if you're increasing that band length, you're also reducing savings. So these are all important things that we before didn't have to think about in a broadcast application. So here's actually images from, from our work. Uh, this is the one smart spray. Uh, system, you see the cameras there for weed detection. So we have three cameras here. Uh, the other uh, units that you see here are actually light bars. So some of these novel technologies have light bars that allow applicators to continue application if conditions are cloudy or even uh, night applications. Okay, so some of the systems have this light units to enhance detection of weeds. But my point with this is that uh, in this experiment, when we trick, when we detected a weed, we triggered a single nozzle. One thing you're gonna see here is that our, you know, our boom was bouncing a little bit when I took this image, and we also had a six to seven mile per hour wind. Okay, so we were traveling this way that you see in the red arrow. We had wind, cross wind coming, and as we were spraying, my concern there is all this uh, spray pattern that we were delivering was kind of shifting, was moving. Okay, so the system detected the weeds, but because of the conditions that we were operating, uh, our target area was never hit because we have this, what we call a uh, displacement here of our spray pattern, and that is a concern. And I think we're gonna see a lot more displace, um, and, uh, displacement of this uh, spray patterns when we have single nozzles, okay? So it's important to keep that in mind. So we conducted an experiment. Uh, this is a PhD student in my lab, uh, Zaim Uglish. Uh, that's part of his work. And what Zaim is looking at is the role of nozzle type, uh, boom height, and number of nozzles. So he compared flat spray uh, with even flat spray, okay, we did the uh, ideal height with this 20, 21 inches from the target versus 30 inches from the target. And then what we did, we activated one versus three nozzles upon uh, weed detection. So the first thing I want to show here is spray card coverage at application, okay, so this is how we collect the data. We have the spray cards, we scan them, and we looked at spray coverage. On top here, we have one uh, nozzle being triggered upon weed detection. Down below, we have three nozzles being detected, and then we have the different nozzles. You know, we have the, uh, the DG, uh, which is our tapered flat fan, versus our TP, that's our even nozzle. And then we have the high boom and low boom. Long story short here, where we get the best coverage with a single nozzle is when we're spraying at the ideal height and low boom. When the boom goes higher, we lose coverage. However, when we go with a three nozzle strategy, you always get good coverage. Okay, so that's an important point. Why is that important? Because that translates into weed control. If everything is fine with your single even nozzle, you get good weed control. However, when you're activating three nozzles, which is weed control here at our research site, the figures in the bottom, we always get good weed control. Okay, so again, it's a fine balance between savings. So yeah, you can save a lot more when we're only triggering one nozzle. However, when we did trigger three nozzles, we reduced the saving, but we increased weed control. And those are things to keep in mind, okay? And that ties very well with herbicide resistance uh, management. And I'm gonna close my presentation here with some of the uh, questions or comments that we got uh, from 
uh, participants of our webinar in September of 2023, okay? So the questions and part of my conclusion here is have you tested the quality of weed control as function of percentage savings? Presumably, greater savings incurs higher risk of resistance of escapes. Are chemical registrations keeping up with spot spraying technology? Will How will this technology affect adjuvant and herbicide use patterns 10 years from now? So tremendous opportunities in that area. And how do we ensure integrated pest management with the systems to not accelerate resistance? I think that's something that's very important. We're dealing with a lot of resistant weeds out there. We don't want to afford escapes, so we keep uh, accelerating that process. So technology has a lot of potential. The smart spray technologies have a lot of potential, but we need to use them wisely so we don't make our resistance problems worse. And how do we do that? Through a good integrated uh, weed management. So with that, uh, my time is up here. I want to thank you all for your attention, and I leave my contact information right here. Thank you.